The following program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Christ for All Nations. Coming up on Christ for All Nations. Steve didn't get, when he got saved, he never said to me, I'm going to be a, an evangelist, I'm going to speak to millions. He said, let's go out and talk to people about Jesus. Let's go door to door. Let's share Christ with everybody that we meet and people as we come in contact with them. Let's share our hearts with them. Jesus changed us like that. My name is Daniel Kalenda. I'm a missionary evangelist who preaches to millions each year alongside evangelist Reinhard Bonnke in Africa and across the world. At our gospel outreaches, we are witnessing an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is winning astonishing numbers of people to Christ one soul at a time. The Lord is also divinely healing broken bodies and restoring lives to the glory of God Almighty. Now, I want to invite you to hear the gospel, see and experience God's miraculous touch, and discover the mission of Christ for all nations. Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Kalenda and welcome to another broadcast of Christ for All Nations. We really do have a very special show lined up for you today. Those of you that are regular viewers, you can immediately tell that our format today is going to be very different. Often I come to you from the dusty fields of our African evangelistic campaigns where literally hundreds of thousands of people gather to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and to experience the power of God. But today I'm coming to you from our studio here in Orlando, Florida, where I'm joined by two amazing ladies who are not only powerful women of God in their own right, but Jerry is the wife and Kelsey is the daughter of the great evangelist Steve Hill, who has gone to be with the Lord. Steve was the evangelist that God used to spark the Brownsville revival, and he impacted so many lives around the world, including my own. Ladies, it's really an honor and a privilege to have you on the Thank program you. It today. It is a privilege to be here. And this is special not only for us, but I believe also for you. I believe this is your first time appearing together on, on television. It is. Yeah, it's great it's to great. be here with my daughter. Well, after this airs, you, you'll probably be getting a lot of other interested parties, I'm sure, because I think this is going to be <laughs> a be very great. amazing conversation. And uh, I want to mention also that Jerry and Kelsey have so generously decided to give a gift to our viewers today. I'll tell you about this in a minute, but I want you to realize that I only have a limited number of these gifts to give away. And when they're gone, they're gone. So. I want you to go ahead, get a pen and paper right now. Get ready to take down the number when it comes up on the screen because I want to make sure that we get one of these into your hands. And Kelsey, I, I, want, to, I want to ask you this because I'm the father of four kids. Mm -hmm. And as an evangelist, I have to hear from you, what was it like for you growing up in the, in the house of such a great man of God like Steve Hill? You know, anytime somebody asks me that, I think, well, what was it like for you when you grew <laughs> up with your dad? And my dad was the most incredible man I've ever met in my life. And I honored him so much, and I still honor him. And, you know, I think that if you're a minister, if you're a pastor, if you are traveling, if you're an evangelist, if you take that time to really love on your children and raise them up in the way they're supposed to go, like the Word of God says, they're not going to resent you. Mm -hmm. They won't resent you. And the Word of God does not return void. So no matter what you do, love on your children and love on people. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was a part of the Brownsville Revival. You, I heard, were just born. What was it, the year after? Uh, three weeks before. Three weeks before? Yeah. <laughs> Making me feel like an old man here. <laughs> My husband but. called me in that Sunday afternoon. It was Father's Day, and we were going to go on a vacation. And he calls me, and he says, Honey, all heaven has come down, and they want us to stay. And so I'm thinking a week. Yeah. You know, he says, and they want you to fly in. Will you come in? And so I'm coming in with all three kids, seven-year-old, four-year-old, and a newborn. And we stay five years. Wow. You know, you we never were going. You thought that would happen? No, no. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Brownsville was, was an amazing time for me. Um, of course, at that time, I was uh, very young and uh, still young, but was much younger then. Mm -hmm. And I saw it from my perspective. Now, looking back, now that I'm an evangelist and I preach, you know, um, you know, a couple hundred times a year. When I look back at what Steve did, preaching a new message every night yes. for years, it almost seems supernatural to me. Yeah. I think it was because every single morning he got up, but he was, I don't know, something took place. Even in his sleep, 
He would wake up in his sleep. He would wake me up. And he's um, up on one arm going, more Lord, <laughs> more Lord, in his sleep. And so I think it was, you know, there were, it was an, a downpour from heaven yeah. that God had done. And when people would ask me, you know, if I could pick one word, what would it be that sparked all of this? Yeah. And I said, God. That's the one word. It was all about God, yeah. about Jesus Christ, yeah. His Son, Holy Spirit, moving in people's lives and people saying, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. We are, and all the sacrifices that took place, which I don't like to use the word sacrifice a lot. I like to use the word that we're crucified with Christ. Right. And all the people that crucified their flesh and were in those meetings, the prayer people, the people on the prayer team, everybody that was there every single night that worked all day long in a job, and then they came to yeah. services every single yeah. night. They were so into this. And Steve would get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want to say tonight? Mm -hmm. And get that message. And it was amazing. Yeah, it really was. I, I can still remember the crowds lined up from early yeah. in the morning. I mean, I'm sure you've heard every imaginable story. We used to get out of the service. This is when we were driving, you know, eight hours to be there. We'd mm -hmm. get out of service, go get in line. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning and stand there from 3 until 6 the next yeah. night to get in the yeah. building. Now, of course, they put an end to that. They wouldn't let you line up after, you know, later on they made a limit. You couldn't get in line until, like, 6 in the morning yeah. or something. <laughs> but can you imagine this? I mean, in hundreds and hundreds of people. We'll Such hunger. Yeah. And, you know, we didn't have all this Internet and yeah. all this stuff going on. It was a lot of word of mouth. Yeah. Yeah. People getting touched and people calling people. That's right. You no know? Facebook, no, no YouTube. Coming back from then. all over I the know. world. From all over yeah. the world. Yeah. It was amazing. And, and these, you know, when I say that Steve preached a new sermon every night, I don't just mean that he had some little Bible lesson. These are some of the best evangelistic messages yeah. I've ever heard. I mean... It would take me a month to develop one of these messages like he did, and he was rattling them off like that. So we have these amazing, uh, these amazing illustrated sermons. In fact, I have a, a few pictures. Um, I'm going to ask the guys just to put up a couple of those pictures in okay. the screen so we can see. Okay, so this, you mm -hmm. can see here, this is a message he was preaching about. You can't have it. What was that about? It was the, preparing a crown while we do everything that we're supposed to be doing for Christ. And we're preparing this crown and we lead people to Jesus and we're talking and witnessing to people that in that crown are all the jewels that came to Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't want a paper crown. Yeah. I don't want my relationship with Jesus Christ to be a paper crown that gets ripped up like this. And he said, when it comes time, when I get to stand before Jesus, I'm going to lay that crown at his feet. And do you know that Kelsey ran off that night when he went home to be with Jesus. I said, Steve, go get Daddy's message <laughs> on the crown. You can't have it. We've got to watch it right now because he's doing, coron it's his coronation day. Yeah. Yeah. And he's laying that, cr that crown at the so feet of Jesus. So we celebrated with him. We mm. did. Yeah. And we laughed and we cried and we were jealous. And I everything. remember him saying, talking about what he would do on that day when yeah. he stood before the Lord with that crown. Yep. Let, yeah. Let's see another one of these uh, pictures. Another one of these illustrated sermons. This is white cane religion. You remember that one? I do. I <laughs> what do. was that one about? <laughs> are the ones that, that you're following, the pastor that's preaching to you, is he telling you the truth? Does he know where he's going? Yeah. Or is the he blind going leading to, the blind. Or are you right. going to be, you know, falling in a ditch, whether it's a preacher or a friend? You know, are they blind to the things of God? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when he preached these messages, I would be on the edge of my seat and be going, come on, baby, come on. You know, I, want, I wanted to see people's hearts receive yeah. and their hearts to be ready. And so I was interceding that their, their hearts would be open yeah. to whatever he was talking about. And it's kind of a blurry picture. That's an old one. But he's got glasses on and a, and a cane like yep. a blind Yep. I remember him tapping around the platform. So <laughs> so it. interesting, so captivating. Let's see one yeah. more. This one, now this is interesting because we're talking about Steve passing, but this says that he died October 28th, 1975. That's a long time ago. This wasn't talking about his actual death, was it? No, when he got saved, October 28th, 1975, he said he died to himself yeah. 
and came alive in Christ. But then when he preached it, he had this here tombstone made up and he puts it up there and it's heavy. It's in my office. It's a real tombstone. It's yeah. a real Granite. tombstone. Granite. It's heavy. You still have this. I do. Yes. yes. And so when he um, had this up on the, the table and he had this, I think, a cloth over it to make it look like a casket. And he said, you know, the old man tries to come back up and you got to, it starts rising up and you got to push it down. <laughs> it starts coming up. You got to push it down. You know, I, it was, you know, he put him, his whole self into yeah. it. Yeah. And that's an incredible amount of work <laughs> to put one into a me one sermon. Yeah. Yeah. But those sermons change people's lives. I have many friends, yes. many friends who, who were changed Brought I to love the Lord hearing those movie. stories. Yeah. yeah. Kelsey, you, you wrote on your Facebook page, you said, my dad was telling a story during an altar call on how he was going to punish his kids with a belt. Before he could tell the story, a woman begins to obnoxiously yell from the balcony, that's child abuse, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what happened. <laughs> Well, he was actually going to punish the kids, and I'm not sure if I was a part you of that. I wasn't, that. yeah. So it was Shelby and Ryan, and he was going to punish them with the belt, and he told them to bend over, and then a woman starts yelling from the balcony, you can't do that, that's child abuse, you need to stop. And he said, hold on, I'm not done with the story. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, I started whipping myself with that belt, and I started beating my legs over and over and over until it was red and it was rashed and it was it was swollen. And I said, "This is what Jesus did for you, kids. Wow. He That's took powerful. on all of your your sins, everything for you when you did not deserve it." And you know that woman felt horrible. You know, <laughs> well, you know, Shelby. I think it was Shelby and Ryan. How grateful they were that they didn't get that belt whipping. And you know, you know Shelby still talks about it to this yeah, day. She does. You yeah. know. That's powerful. He was an amazing, amazing dad, uh, man, and and preacher. That's how most of us know him. Let's just let's just watch. Her. I want to want you to see a couple of minutes of Steve Hill in action. He which hath begun a good work in you, the Bible says, Philippians 1, 6, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And when he starts in you, he'll finish it. God has prepared a place of safety for everyone who chooses to come. It's time to get right with Jesus. It's time to repent of your sins. It's time to let the blood, let the blood, let the blood wash you clean. He is your only rock of safety. He is your ark. He's your way out, friend. The meeting with God will take place. It will take place with thy God, meaning your God. Whether you like it or not, Jesus Christ is over you. If you're away from God, if you need forgiveness, if you need Jesus Christ to wash you clean, do not hesitate in the balcony at home on this main floor if you need forgiveness i want you to come right now hurry come right now hurry and kneel at this altar everyone out loud jesus speak to my heart change my life forgive me wash me cleanse me make me new i ask you tonight to be my savior be my lord my very best friend Jesus from this moment on I am yours and you are mine come live your life through me I give myself to you in your precious name in your precious name in Jesus name Amen Glory wonderful. I, I miss Steve. I can imagine you miss him a hundred times more, but um, he made a real difference in all of our lives. But we've not, we've not come here to, to cry about missing mm -hmm. him and feel nostalgic, but to thank God that a voice like his yeah. was released mm -hmm. in our generation and um, affected so many lives. You know, when I watch those things, I don't see just those services, those crusades and things like that. I think about how we got to that part mm -hmm. because it was 16 years of marriage before the Brownsville revival broke out. And we were working with drug addicts with Teen Challenge for the first five years of our walk with Christ. Then we were youth pastors for about four years and going door to door and knocking on doors and witnessing to people we wanted 
Steve didn't get, when he got saved, he never said to me, um, I'm going to be a, an evangelist. I'm going to speak to millions. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that to me. He said, let's go out and talk to people about Jesus. Wow. Let's go door to door. Let's share Christ with everybody that we meet and people as we come in contact with them. Let's share our hearts with them. Jesus changed us like that. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the mission field and we're going door to door, witnessing to people. And it wasn't huge crusades. We were planning churches and we started out with an empty building and we went door to door to door to door. We went in the train stations, passing out tracks, telling people that Jesus Christ had a plan for their life and he needed them. 16 years of doing that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he goes and, but he's, he's hunger, it yeah. kept growing yeah. for more of God's presence in his life. And he wanted to be that vessel mm. that flowed, that, that God could flow through. And that intensified more and more and more. As he got on his face before God, he said, God, I want you to flow through me. I want you to flow through me. I want you to touch through me. I want, I want everybody to know that it's so you, God, that's doing this. Mm -hmm. It's not me. Yeah. And that's why I think the Brownsville Revival broke out. It was that church was praying, but he had been having things like this happen in other churches before that. Mm -hmm. But, and some people have told me, it should have been my church, you know, because he had been there preaching. But it was, you know, God uses us as we're faithful in the little that's things. Right. And then yeah. as we keep being faithful and we keep being committed to him yeah. and his passion and God's passion for people, yeah. then you don't, you don't know what the future holds, right. what God can do. But he doesn't take you from here to here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a process yeah. faithfulness. of yeah. faithfulness. That's, a, that's an incredible key. And, you know, um, I think that, that is all through his life. Mm -hmm. Even when the Lord promotes you, there's still faithfulness. Yes. So then, you know, Steve uh, had cancer. And um, for a while, you know, we were all devastated when we heard the news. We were all praying, of course, for him to be healed. I remember visiting him with, with Pastor Bonke yes. in, in the hospital and praying with him. And at that time, it looked like it was, it was the end for him. Mm -hmm. And then an amazing thing happened. He just, he had this recovery. He bounced back almost as though the Lord gave him uh, a window of time, yes. a special season. And in that season, he wrote... Um, a book, that it, a subject that burned in him those last days of his life. Yes. The book is called Spiritual Avalanche. We were talking about it a little bit before we went on today about how he wrote it on his iPad with one finger even yes. though he's in pain. Tell yes. us about that. Well, he had been going through cancer treatment for a couple of years and when they put him on hospice in 2011, it wasn't because of the cancer, it was because of the side effects from treatment. Had His immune system had so collapsed. Oh. And for six months, he was, they expected only him to only live for a few days. And for six months, he was on hospice, and God gave us wisdom on what to do uh, to take care of him, to bring him out of it. And so he, his body was restored from the side effects of the treatment, but he still had cancer. And in January, he had this vision of a spiritual avalanche. And he didn't even know to what extent, you know, because he was out of it during that time in hospice. Yeah. And he didn't know the, the extent of the spiritual condition in the world. And he got this vision and he, um, he got his, his iPad with one finger and he's in pain because he found out he had a tumor in his spine. Mm -hmm. And so here he is sitting in the chair with his, his iPad mini writing out spiritual avalanche. He was determined to do it. He was in intense pain. So that book was written out of pain and, but I think of it, in, it was pain in his spiritual body, but I think he had pain um, in the spiritual realm, yeah. feeling the heartbeat of God. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, the condition that our country had come to, that he felt an intense need to write it. Mm -hmm. And all the money that came in for that book 
went into helping Teen Challenge Centers. Our son was in a Teen Challenge Center and he was traveling around and he was doing all of these these tapings to promote Teen Challenge and we, with that money we bought um, equipment for him to travel around. He was in Michigan and in Boston area going around to eight different TC programs and in Vero Beach wow. um, and all the money that that came in from that was not very much came in from that book that went to buy the equipment from our son to do all of that. It just shows that he didn't that get it, anything personally from it. it. It must have really burned in him. It did. Yeah. Really, and, and I mean, it's uh, when, when you get a message like that from the heart of a man of God, this is something very serious. And uh, maybe you're saying, okay, well, here comes the commercial. Listen, this is not a commercial because we're not selling this to you today. Um, uh, the Hills have asked that we give a copy to you. So um, we're going to, look, we don't have an unlimited amount of these, but if you call in right now, we're going to send you a free copy of this book. And the reason is because this was so special to Steve, and we're celebrating his life today. And I want to get this last message. The Lord literally brought him back from the brink of death to write this book and deliver a message that is a timely prophetic word for the body of Christ. And I want to get this in your hands absolutely free. Here's how you can get your copy right now. From one of the greatest international revivalists and best-selling author, Steve Hill, comes an eye-opening vision that will prevent millions from end-time deception. Spiritual Avalanche will help you understand the false teachings that are steadily rising in opposition to the solid foundational truth of Christ. Universalism, deification or worship of man and disbelief in hell and the judgments of God are just some of the incredible fallacies exposed in this book. For a limited time only, you can receive your free copy of Spiritual Avalanche when you call today. This powerful book will help you unveil the truth and empower you to tear down foolish teachings, leaving a foundation of solid biblical instruction that will save the lost, heal the sick, and strengthen Christians to do the true work of Christ. Call now and receive your free copy of Spiritual Avalanche and prepare yourself to be wise to the schemes of the enemy. So make sure that you call and get that. Again, we don't have an unlimited amount, so get on the phone right now. Get in touch with us and let us know that you want your free copy. Jerry and Kelsey, I feel very strongly that Steve is just smiling as he sees. I know he's there. You know, he's the God of the living, and, and I know that Steve is smiling. He's so proud of you. He's proud of the work you're doing, proud of you even here today. And, and we would, we would um, actually disappoint him, I think, if we were to end this show without giving people a chance to surrender their lives to Jesus. Amen. And so, Kelsey, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you're the daughter of one of the greatest evangelists <laughs> in the world. And there, is, there are people watching right now that don't know the Lord or they're away from the Lord. And I would like you just to take a moment and talk to them and lead them in a prayer. Would you do that? Yeah. You know, right now, if you're watching this and maybe you're a prodigal, maybe you knew the Lord, maybe you've backslidden, I want you to right now know that this was for you. This wasn't for millions of people watching all over the place. This was specifically for you, ordained by God. And right now, I want you to get on your knees. If you know you're away from God, if you know that you've backslidden, or if you know that you've never known Jesus, but you want what we're talking about, if you want a free life, a free life away from sin, away from pain, away from hurt, all the things that this world brings to you, I'm not saying that Christianity is easy, but I am saying it's worth it. You will never regret this decision. It will be the greatest decision of your life. Right now, I want you to get on your knees and close your eyes and, and follow me in this prayer. God, I give my life to you. Jesus, I love you. I may not know who you are, but I give my life to you. Jesus, come into my life. Change me from the inside out. Lord, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. Jesus, I love you. I want to give my life to you 100% for the rest of my days. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 I can tell you have that same evangelistic <laughs> mantle on your life. Yeah. Um, if, my friend, if you've prayed that prayer, I want you to understand something. 
This is not the finish line that you've crossed. This is the starting line. Amen. Right. Yeah. This is the beginning of a walk with Jesus, and you need to get yourself involved in, in, in a local church, become accountable, where you can be discipled and grow in the things of God. If you need help with that, if you need a Bible, if you need some resources, get in touch with us. We'll do whatever we can to help you. And uh, I really believe that this was divinely ordained for you today, so make sure that yeah. you take advantage of that. Amen. I, thank you so much for, for doing this, for opening up and sharing your hearts with us. It was great being here with you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm praying for you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much for the gift that you're giving to our viewers. I believe that's going to be a blessing to many lives. And for those that want to connect with your ministry, which you're carrying on, even though Steve's gone, how can we get in touch with you guys? Well, it's Together in the Harvest. That's been our theme ever since the very beginning when we first started in, you know, in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. um, Together in the Harvest, it's also Steve Hill Ministries. So stevehill.org, if you get on there, there's telephone numbers there, there's addresses, everything that um, to get in touch with us. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And we're as a family. My other daughter, she's eight months pregnant, so she's not here. And my son-in-law, um, we're all working on this together. Yeah, amen. And I would encourage you to get behind their ministry. It continues to go forward and see many people touched for the sake of the kingdom of God. Thank you again for joining us on the program. If you want to hear about some of the upcoming events that are coming to a city near you, stick around. I'm going to mention those in just a moment. Um, until next time, we love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. Join me and Evangelist Daniel Kolenda for the Reinhard Bonnke Gospel Crusade on August 20th and 21st, 2016 at the Cox Convention Center in Oklahoma City. It is a totally free event and I'm asking that all believers will bring the lost. We cannot make this crusade a success without your help. Visit our website and sign up now. We are all guilty and we all need salvation. Today is your day of salvation. All hail the power of Jesus' name! So once again, my friend, a couple very key events that are coming up. Number one, our gospel crusade that's happening in Oklahoma is going to be historic. And also I'm going to be at Azusa now with the call. I'm going to be ministering there with Lou Engle and Bill Johnson and Todd White and many, many others on April 9th. We're expecting 120,000 people to fill that arena. It's going to be amazing. So make sure that you get involved. Also, I'm going to be in Plovdiv, Bulgaria, April 15th and 16th. I'm going to be at the Jesus Conference Houston, April 21st through 23rd. I'm going to be at Praise Chapel in Houston, Texas, April 24th, and many, many other wonderful events coming up. You can find all of them on my website, danielcalenda.com slash events. Go there and make sure that you join us at one of our upcoming events. I really want to see you. I want to shake your hand. I want to meet you. I want to pray for you. So make sure that you get involved, and I'll see you very soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. To learn more about the mission and ministry of Christ for all nations, please visit our website. You can write to us at CFAN, P.O. Box 590356, Orlando, Florida, 32859. Visit our prayer site to share a prayer request or testimony. Thank you for helping win millions to Christ, one soul at a time.